Only T-Mobile gives you unlimited data with taxes and fees included so you save hundreds a year. And get two lines for just a hundred bucks a month all in with AutoPay. And right now, harness the power of unlimited with a Samsung Galaxy S8. It's the fastest Galaxy ever, so it deserves the fastest and most advanced LTE network. Why wait? Switch today. Only at T-Mobile. Top 3% of users greater than 30 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds. Price includes sales tax. Blog Talk Radio. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary, a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. You're gonna kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Off the Chain. I am your host, Yvonne Mason, and yes, it is Wednesday night, the beginning of another week for this beautiful, wonderful, explosive show. And as y'all all know, the show is never scripted, so I have no idea what's going to happen, and it usually does. That was a piece, of course, of shameless promotion for my book, The Pink Canary, which is a comedy whodunit, and the ad man is Christopher Dunham, who is absolutely marvelous. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you what. This show is not even a year old. It won't be a year old until July the 27th. The show is growing by leaps and bounds, and I could not be prouder of it. And the reason that it is growing is because of all the wonderful guests that, I don't know, maybe they like me, I don't know, maybe maybe they're into sadistic things, but they keep coming <laughs> back and they, they keep being interviewed on this show. This morning, as I do every morning, simply because... I'm freaky like that. I, I look at the numbers of the show because if the if the if the numbers are successful, that means we are successful. And my goal for the for the show was fifteen thousand before the end of the year or by the end of the year. Well, we've exceeded that, ladies and gentlemen. This morning, just on Blog Talk Radio alone, we're at six thousand seven hundred and thirty-five listeners. Six thousand seven hundred and thirty-five listeners in a show that's not even a year old. When you Add that total to all the podcasts that I put this show up on after it goes into archives. We're at 15,781 listeners. We're almost to 16,000 listeners. I raised my goal to 20,000 by the end of the year, and I'm sure that we will reach it before the end of the year. Because since I, I just can't stand it, and because... I think that there is more that I can do for others to help them be successful. I've kicked it up a notch. On Sunday night at 8 o'clock Eastern, I am adding a show that is pre-recorded, and it is nothing but musicians. I don't care what kind of music it is. I don't care if it's rock. I don't care if it's... I don't care. And what I do is, especially indie musicians, are new traditional musicians who are trying to get out there because this show reaches over 53 countries. So what I have decided to do is run a show for at least an hour. We'll see how it goes, maybe make it two hours. That's nothing but music. So I introduce the show, then I introduce that musician, I play three of their songs, then I introduce another musician and play their three of their songs and so on and so forth. The show will debut this Sunday night at 8 p.m. Now, if you're a musician, you know someone who's a musician, and you want to get them free exposure, this is the best place to do it. All you have to do is contact me at offthechainradio at yahoo.com. Ladies and gentlemen, it's just like everything else we do on this show. I do not charge my guests. To come on this show. They are my guests. I have invited them into my home. I would not charge someone to come into my home. I bring these guests into my show because I want them to be successful. That is very important to me because I am only as successful as they are. This is just an avenue to help get you out there, especially artists, because we have a hard enough time as independent artists that is, musicians, film producers, 
writers, you name it. We have a hard enough time getting exposure. So stay tuned. I will tell you again about this show the rest of the week, but stay tuned for Rocking the Chain on Sunday night. Now, with that being said, I have a guest tonight who's probably busier than I am, like a long-tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. This woman is absolutely amazing. She's been on here before. I I just love her to death. Her name is Jennifer Dawn, and she has her own production company. It's called Forbidden Tears Productions. She is the owner and founder, director, and producer. Now she's expanded her services to New Zealand. So she has made it a shareholding company with Kevin Luck and Phil Palmer in New Zealand. And they are part... So now they represent not only the film industry, but they also now represent musicians on their recording label, and they market and distribute them. And with the partnering of Gilbert Literary Agency and Dunedin, New Zealand, FTP announces today their own literary and publishing company with the first to sign being award-winning author Betty Dravis and Barbara Watkins, who wrote Six Pack of Blood and Six Pack of Fear. Now... That is very important because this amazing woman, Miss Jennifer Dawn, has taken Six Pack of Blood, which is a book of short horror stories, and is turning it into film. And I don't know where she gets her energy. She makes me (laughs) tired watching her. (laughs) <laughs> so, without further ado, welcome, my friend. I am so glad that you came back. Well, thank you. I am so glad to be here. Wow, you sent, you make me tired. <laughs> <laughs> you well, make good me Lord, tired I've got... listening to everything that I do. <laughs> well, I, I mean, you're you're in film, you're in music, you're in publishing. When you're not doing all that. I think you're running around saving people. I mean, woman, <laughs> she's also a photographer, ladies and gentlemen. She's won awards for her photography. So when do you have time to sleep? Um, sometimes I sleep, yes, sometimes. <laughs> I, I think that I must be, I don't know, immortal or vampire or something like that. But, you know, it's it's amazing. I love everything I do, you know. And to me, it's it's not really work. It just flows. It's just a part of me. Well, know? it's a passion, and when you have a passion, you never work a day in your life. Well, that's what they say. It, it's it. Yeah, that's what they say. I mean, it, if you do it right, and you know what you're doing, and it it just flows, and it seems to grow, and you build it, and. You know, I didn't always know what I was doing, so you, I built my company. But you know, I don't know. It just, yeah, it's a passion, and and it isn't like work. It's like fun, and you meet some of the greatest people, and you put out great work, and you grow, and you learn, and you just always do better. Every every day you get up, you just do better. And you have a um, a partnership with the people in New Zealand. And yes, they're I in the middle two of yes. there two. Okay, so see ladies and gentlemen, she has two partnerships. One in New Zealand, where's the other one? Well, they the other in there's there's two partnerships. I'm Forbidden Tears Productions New Zealand Limited with Phil Palmer and Kevin Palmer um had decided to take um other options because of his family obligations. Mm-hmm. So it's Phil Palmer and Jennifer Dawn in New Zealand with Forbidden Tears Productions Limited, shareholding company. And then I'm partners with, like you said, Parnell Gilbert Literary Agency um, in Dunedin, New Zealand. So there's two in New Zealand. So, ladies and gentlemen, if if, if you think that you can't have a profession and it cross oceans, <laughs> guess again, in this day and age, we can do anything we want to with the technology we have. It is absolutely amazing. Oh, that is so true. And then I partnered in the U.K. 
and I partnered with Max Rustano Music. So it's Max Rustano Music and Forbidden Tears uh, Productions uh, for Max Rustano. And Max Rustano is an amazing artist, and we partnershiped on his album, and he had just finished working on an album with Donny Osmond as well. But Max, I've known Max since he was 17, so I crossed the pond, as he says on his album, and he crossed the pond this way. So then that enabled me to cross over into the U.K., but I work with a lot of other artists, um, singers, musicians, and filmmakers in the U.K. as well. So now I have the partnership in the U.K. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this woman is um, an, a international. She is becoming of international fame, and we're going to delve into that in a few minutes. But... She and I have talked before about dreams and passions and and doing things that we love to do, and she's of the same mindset that I am. We don't let anything stand in our way, do we, Jennifer? Well, you can't. You know, if you want to accomplish something, especially being a woman in a man's world, and face it, you know, you might say this is the 21st century and everything else, but in the business that we call the business, it's is largely still a man's world. And you have to be a tough woman. You have to be a businesswoman. You have to be able to break barriers. You have to be able to stand up, stick to your guns, and shoot from the hip in order to make it work. So, no, you can't let things stand in your way. You have to find a way to pull rabbits out of your arse, as they say, and and make it happen, you know. And And you also can't, as a woman, you cannot work... You you cannot succeed, and I've preached this for years. This is why a lot of women fail in the business world, because they operate on emotion instead of logic and reasoning. Oh, that's the you know that that is so true. Because, I mean, I've been told I have the emotional level of a teaspoon, and, <laughs> and, and it's it. sad in a way, because in in largely the, they're right. What's sad is, I have to be cautious with with children. You know, and and you have to have a certain ear for things, and you have to be understanding. And I have to take two minutes and put my own hand on my shoulder and say, okay, Jennifer, you need to remember to listen. You need to remember to be understanding at certain levels. But largely, I I have to remind myself that because I'm so business-minded most of the time. Well, if you weren't, then then the the wolves in the professional world and in the business would eat you alive. They would say, "Well, she's a bitch because she she are she bitches, or she's <laughs> a whiner because she cries, or she wears her emotions on her sleeves." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now they don't just say I'm a bitch; they say I am the bitch. But it, that's an honor to me because. That tells me that I'm doing something right, and it also tells it tells them that I can back up what I say, and that's important in business and being a woman in the man's world is to be able to stand up, shake a man's hand, and know that you can back it up, and know that you have the respect in the business world from people. They know that you do have it. Now, when you have to say no, when you have to say, all right, look, I really mean to do this, but I'm sorry, I cannot do this, and or I'm going to say look, I'd love to do this, but I cannot do this, and I'm not going to string you along, so I'm just going to say no. And, you know, you just got to say straight up. And they don't want to hear it. Nobody wants to hear the truth, but you've got to be able to say that. And and, and while you might be hated, you're also respected. I, I would think so in the large run, and I would rather have that than the other. And, you know... Be I'm, I'm known as a hardline producer, a hardline director because of certain things like that, but I'm also known for getting things done. Exactly, and, and, and that's that's, important. that's the bottom line because you right. have people depending on you, and if you can't come through for them, they can't come through for you, and the whole thing falls apart. Right, right, and and I think that one big thing that I've learned in business too is I've learned from other people in business. And things that have happened and when I have gone through these things and I've dealt with people along my way of coming up is the biggest thing I've learned is how not to be. And then that's guided my business and how I've run my company and how I've grown my company and grown myself as well. And it's growing like the floods <laughs> in Missouri. <laughs> it, it is, isn't it? It really is. And sometimes I don't it see really- it. I 
I, I had a musician. It, it's uh, Ray Rayski Pitts, and he's an amazing, amazing musician. And one day he made a post, and he said, this was on my Facebook, and he said, Jennifer, have you ever just looked back and seen how far you've come? And, you know, he woke me up because I really guess I've been so busy and I hadn't. And I really appreciate those friends in my life who keep me real and actually say, turn around, Jennifer, just turn around for a little bit. Because it's amazing when when I do take the chance to do that. And I want to thank Ray Risky, by the way. And there's a musician you might want to put on your show, Ray Risky Pitts. He's an amazing singer. Ray... Red, Ray Rayski Pitts, Ray Pitts, and Doug Adair, and all those guys that have had my back since FTP began. And, by the way, I might add, uh, T. Doug Adair and Elizabeth Jane are the two singers that are in the music video for Don't Ever Tell that is going to be screened at Miami Epic. And they did the song Better World. An amazing song, and so they're they're. I want to give a shout out to them and congratulate them for Miami Epic. And um, and while we're song. on, while we're on that subject, which was on my my notes, and as you and I are prone to do, we I don't know how you know all this, but it we always wind up back to where we <laughs> need to be. Let's just talk a minute about Miami Epic because this is a big deal for you. It, it really, really is, yes. Um, I'm very excited, very honored. And this is two film fests, um, two separate film festivals that have accepted my work. Uh, we had Miami Epic that accepted um, Heavy Metal and um, The Other Side of the Rainbow. And then we had Industry Boost competition that I had entered festivals in that accepted three others. And they all meet at this IndieWise Grand Convention and in Florida. So two film festivals accepted five of my works. So together we have five screening at this convention in August. That's amazing. And, and, and the thing is, what people might not understand is this could lead to going to the Keynes Film Festival or breaking out as a sleeper movie or anything we one just doesn't know when one sits on this journey where one's going to wind up i i know it's very exciting and the thing is is there's um the the our entire film flowers in the snow had been accepted but because of the link they're going to screen the trailer but flowers in the snow is already released but the other side of the rainbow is in post and um, Don't Ever Tell is released, but we have a Don't Ever Tell 2 and and other things. So these trailers that they're screening have the potential to do a meet and greet and this kind of thing. So I'm very excited about the trailers to be screened. And so this is a very, very exciting time for me and mostly for the meet and greet and to be able to meet the contacts and the people that I've met you know, in the industry, but not met in person. So it'll be a great time for me to shake hands and say hello and get to know in person the people that I've spoken to for so long. And then, who knows, we may (laughs) see you walking up and accepting an Academy Award one of these days. Oh, I hope so. We all all look forward to that, you know. The psychic told me in five years I should be getting an Emmy or a Grammy, and I don't really listen to psychics much, but I think that was very nice, and I thanked her very much. (laughs) Well, and it's very possible. It's flattering. Well, and and it's possible. You've heard me enough. The impossible we do right now, the improbable takes about five minutes longer. Well, you never know until you try, you know. Right. And And you have to believe in order to get it. If if you don't believe in something, you're never going to achieve it, and if you don't dream it, you can't believe it. And you've heard me say that a dozen times. You that's have right. To and you and I believe on the same philosophies, you know. And that's like, I guess, in part why I like to help other people achieve their dreams in many ways. And especially, I also like to help women in the industry, um, especially women directors, women producers, because I know how hard it is. And I'm very excited, too, to be bringing a, uh, a two women directors into this film, Passageway to Hell. And 
to work on this project with Kelly D. Weaver as well. I'm bringing Kelly in from Florida. He's an amazing director, and he's done a lot of his work. He's fun to work with. But I'm bringing Ilian Snyder in, a female director, first AD, to work with Kelly D. Weaver. And she's got really good reviews, and she needed experience in directing. She's been first AD, and she's done a lot of things before, but never outright directing. So looking forward to bringing her in and letting her have experience and giving her some real hands-on with Kelly Weaver. And then Mina Only from Florida will be coming in, and she's an amazing cinematographer. Uh, great work behind the camera, and looking forward to working with her and letting her direct establishing scenes and this and that, because we're going to really rock a lot of scenes. we got a lot to do in two days, so we're going to be running two sets at the same time. Wow. Yeah. You are ambitious. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and then, of course, Mario Prado is my consultant and my co-producer, and he will be here to guide the process, and we'll be kicking off meetings and everything, and so I'm very excited to be working with Mario Prado. He's an amazing mentor, an amazing guy, business consultant, and actually a guide in the business as far as the industry goes and it has really taught me a lot as far as things go and I just really respect him so he's coming in I'm looking forward to rocking it with him and this whole thing is going to go off great we got a great lineup so what made you decide because I've been following this particular process and when I saw, were well, you going to film this entire film in two days on two different sets <laughs> I'm going has she lost her mind? What made you decide to go in that direction? Did things just fall into place so that it was well, easy things, to accomplish? Yeah, kind of, yeah, because, you know, Yvonne, with, with me, and now I've filmed three films in a weekend before, uh-huh. and, you know, we we did, you know, it, it's not that difficult, not two, three complete films, but obviously we were shooting three different parts of three films in one weekend we shot heavy metal in a day and then we shot the other side of the rainbow that same weekend and then we shot scenes for another part of another film that weekend we had everybody out here and then kelly d weaver was here shooting his film out on the ranch so you know at the same time so we had everybody here and we were shooting all these things and then kelly used my studio here as you know my home is a live-in is a living studio Uh so a living studio, I don't know if people know what that means, but a living studio means my walls are movable. So what you see one week, you might come in and it's a whole other thing the next week. So everything can be moved, and, and it's like this, what do you call those little puzzle boxes where you kind of move them? And, and that's kind of what my walls and my ceilings and everything does. So we just move things around and we shoot, and it's a living, it's a living studio. So he shot in... in what was heavy metal scene, and he turned it into his thing. And so we just rock and roll and change things. So shooting, rocking two scenes at once is not a problem. And I checked with everybody, and I said, have you ever done this? And they're like, yeah, we can do this, not a problem. And we got 36 scenes to shoot in two days. So we need to run two sets. We need to run establishing scenes and get it going. But this is an amazing film. And we've got everybody coming out, everybody set. We got all the hotel rooms booked. We're ready to rock. We've got, uh, as far as I know, now this is the first time I'm going to announce it. My assistant administrator had said she spoke with the mayor, and we needed a van to pick up our actors. And the mayor said that he has driven the van many times, and he would be glad to drive the van to pick up our wow. actors. Wow! So we have the See, mayor picking up our actors. <laughs> See, ladies and gentlemen, in this little town that Jennifer lives in. She has such a rapport with the in-group, as in the firefighters, the first responders, the police department, anyone that she needs. People, yeah. Because she puts them in her films. She incorporates them in her work. They love her for it because they get Well, they can use it for training videos. And a lot of times I'll work up their scenes. They can use them for training videos or whatever. And, and, you know, what's great about them is they don't need scripts. They already know what they're doing. (laughs) So you just, you know, I hear, go do your thing. Can you go arrest this guy? And they're like, yeah. But what I thought was great is when the police chief in the other side of the rainbow, he said, Jennifer, I've always wanted to say, freeze, scumbag. I said, say it. I said, say it. 
And when he pulled up and they got out and they drew their weapons and that guy was running and he got out and said that, it was a cut. It was perfect. It sounds so natural. It was great. He had a ball. I love this and, town, and, and I and, love and all they, these and, people. And this is how <laughs> she gets things done in her community. Now, not only does she have all these wonderful people, like the mayor who's going to play uh, chauffeur, she also added to this wheelhouse. She's building a community theater yes. to help young people live their dream. Now, it doesn't get any better than that, ladies and gentlemen. And How I would like that? to, if I could, yeah, give a shout-out to Gene Michaels out of California. Uh, he's come on board with me, and he's looking at getting, uh, finding ways to bring in donations and contributions and people to invest in the community theater. So now I actually have help on this, and he's been working with me. And he's an amazing guy. He works in real estate, and, and he's a big supporter of the community and the arts and everything. So give a shout-out to Gene Michaels. I just really like what he's doing. I've been very impressed. See, and ladies I want to tell him I'm thank you. Live your dream because Jennifer and I are. Now, yes. everybody I know has been waiting on, what the hell have they been talking about? When I told <laughs> you, ladies and gentlemen, to remember the book Six Pack of Blood, I want Jennifer to tell you the backstory of Six Pack of Blood and the two beautiful women that wrote these stories and what came of it and the journey they are now on with Jennifer. So, Jennifer, it's your story. Tell it. Oh, my goodness. Well, first I've got a little announcement to make, and I don't know if you've heard. I am happy to say that the author, co-author, actually they're both co-authors, Betty Dravis and Barbara Watkins. But Barbara Watkins and her publicist will be out here for the filming of Passageway to Hell. So they are coming out. They've got a hotel room. So they will be on location during the filming process. Now, for, for for the people that don't understand why that is important, ladies and gentlemen. Because Barbara Watkins wrote the story. Passageway to Hell from the book Six Pack of Blood. Six Pack of Blood is the first book that I had heard about uh, through Betty Dravis. Betty Dravis is an amazing woman and who's been a mentor to me and a very, very good friend. I love her to death, and she's more like family, and she introduced me to Barbara Watkins as the co-author. Well, Betty Dravis had asked me if I would produce one of her stories, and bring it to life. She told me it has always been a dream to have her stories come to life. So I said, all right, which one would you like? So she said, heavy metal. So I said, all right, I'll take a look at it. I wrote the script, and I said, okay, and we had everybody fly out, and we shot the film in a day, and we had two international premieres, and, you know, everything. It was nothing fancy. we just given Betty her dreams and making it happen. So now it's released in seven subtitle languages, streaming in Germany now, in VOD, and Amazon, and Pantaflix picked it up. And we're looking at other outlets because my aggregator has said that um, uh, Netflix and Hulu Plus and those are interested as well. So we're looking at getting that out there. And then I came up with the idea, well, what about an anthology? And Betty Dravis got very excited, and so she said, well, why not do one of Barbara Watkins, and I said, well, if you want to include her, let's do it. So, okay, I'm I'm fine with that. So we did Saving the GPS Lady, which is now one week from being done, and we'll enter post. And then it will come back to the U.S. from New Zealand, and we'll lay it out on the timeline, and we'll hit it back to Hollywood for uh, edits, colorization, the whole bit, and get all the finalizing done and subtitles, everything done. And then now we're doing Passageway to Hell, the third the third one, which is Barbara Watkins. And that's basically the back story. But now for another announcement, what do you think the next one will be? I have no clue. Well, I have another announcement. Aren't you full of announcements tonight? You are. Well, I have allowed Jeffrey Gould, amazing actor, and I said I sent him both PDF copies 
off of Amazon today as a gift. And I said, Jeffrey, these are the films that have been done, and I included the snack, which Mina only had shot. I said, these are the ones that have been done. Will you do the honors of choosing the next film, and you can put yourself in as one of the characters of your choice? So I don't even know what the next film is. So now, people, we will wait and see what Jeffrey Gould chooses. Wow. And then we'll go from there. And it's it's been an amazing ride. It's a lot of fun. And this is just one aspect of what we're doing because, as you know, we're getting ready for the Mansfield Killings as well, written by Scott Fields. And give our listeners the backstory on that one because that is an amazing story within itself and how that you came is, across it. Well, being a partner with uh, Parnell Gilbert, uh, Emerantia, who was my agent as an author at one time, um, but now we're partners in literary, she approached me to bring his book to film. So I looked at it, and it is the most notorious killing spree in the history of Mansfield, Ohio. And I said, well, heck yeah, I want this. This is amazing. So I optioned the film. We signed the contract. And I took it to Mario Prado, and I said, hey. And he said, hey. So we got to work on it. And now Mansfield Reformatory is one of the top five most haunted prisons in the world. So we are also, another formal announcement that Yvonne Mason gets to hear first. And this is the first public announcement, but formal uh, official and trailers and all this stuff will be forthcoming. But we are going to be doing a paranormal prelude to the film. As PRs, where we go to the reformatory, we have Dr. Michael Lynch, Carrie Schubert, Michael Harrelson, and we will be going there and spending the night in the reformatory and doing a paranormal prelude about the Mansfield killings, which is where the killers spent their time in this killing spree. That's where they were housed. So we want to go in there and spend the night and see about a little history with the, with the killers from the story and see what happens there. So more more to follow on that and more to come. But this is an amazing thing. So also the Mansfield killings, we have Jeffrey Gould, we have Tony Devon so far, and we're not casting anything else yet, but it will be shot in Ohio. And the Mansfield Reformatory is where Shawshank Redemption and Air Force One, to name a few, were shot. And that's now- coming in 2018. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, if if you have not heard of Forbidden Tears Production and Miss Jennifer Dawn and her merry band of filmmakers, you might want to check her out because <laughs> she just gets better and better in what she does. And she, she brings stories to life that might get lost in the shuffle. Well, you know, not everybody picks up, picks everything up, you know, but you get better at, you know, you, I don't know, you, it's, I think every story has an audience. Uh-huh. Just like every it, book has a reader. Well, you know, just and, like the the first one that you did, I don't know many people that would have taken that film and put it together. Because it is well, it's a, a it was a different one now. to put together, and even it, what was so amazing is when Armand Mastroianni out of California he read my script, and he said, "Jennifer, this is a very good script." He says, "I'm impressed. It makes me want to see the film. I can't wait to see the film." <laughs> so to get kudos like that from such an amazing producer who has done so many great films and everything out of California right off the bat on my script was awesome. And he was very impressed, and he he called and gave me a personal thank you after that film, and I thought that was very nice. So, and that that I call I call heavy metal a little B spoof comedy horror campy. That's what it was meant to do, which people don't realize. I shot it like it was meant to be shot. Betty Dravis has always called it a a B campy horror spoof comedy horror spoof. So everybody looks at it, and I'm like, hey, it was shot the way it was supposed to be shot. And that's what it was. And every producer shoots something the way they they vision it. And campy has its day, 
you know. Mm-hmm. It, it does. It's, I, it does. A lot of people, you know, there's a big following on these campy films, and which I never knew actually. <laughs> and 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 so <laughs> recent, I never knew that. I I thought, well, really, you know, um, you're kidding. Okay, so okay, we'll go for it, right? And we did, and it's very popular, and I've been very pleased. And so I was, I was a little surprised myself, a 16-minute film and the popularity that it has because it's a campy, spoofy movie. And not every film that I shoot, of course, everything is different. You, you don't shoot everything. You shoot it the way you want it for what it's supposed to be, and that's what Betty Davis wanted it to be. So we shot that that, that way. And now Passageway to Hell is a whole other ball game. This is classy Hitchcock. Um, gosh, Wizard of Oz. It's, I mean, and I say Wizard of Oz in a way because I can't say it's it's a secret. <laughs> but I, oh, I wish I could. But I, it's a secret. But classy Hitchcock. It's not your typical vampire demon, blood feeding you know, Halloween thing. This is classy, awesome. It, and it, the way the script, everybody signed a non-disclosure, and nobody's going to breathe a word on this, because this is not going to be what anybody expects, and it's awesome. And this is not going directly to Amazon and Create Space and this and that, and this is going with me and Mario Prado, and this is going straight away another route. And this is awesome film. We have Mike Marino, Mike Marino has worked with Vincent Pastoria, The Sopranos, and, you know, and Jay Leno and, you know, of The Tonight Show on a series of that and other movies. He's been great. We've got Tevis Markham, who's worked with Stallone and Schwarzenegger, you know, awesome films that he's done. We've got, you know, just, oh, I don't know, Russell Hoffman, and he's, he's, he's palled around with Meg Ryan and, you know, all of these people. We've got Little Rock. We've got the hub of Arkansas film. And, you know, we've got amazing cast in this. It's it's awesome. I'm very impressed. And so on this, this film, gonna everybody's going to go big. You're not going to expect what's coming out of here. On, so. on this film, everybody's going to go big and nobody's going home. Is what it amounts to. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. And we're very <laughs> excited. And I wish I could tell you, but every film is shot for what it's meant to be. That's what now, a lot of people don't understand. <clears throat> Saving the GPS lady, is that horror, is that comedy, is it a mix? Saving the GPS lady is a mix. And i got to tell you, the footage is amazing. And Phil Palmer did an awesome job for what he had to work with over there, but I tell you what, that's genius. And when I look at the footage, the clarity, the way it was shot, the angles, do you realize they have, it's almost a GPS lady clapboard. That clap really talks. It's it's automated, you know? And it's scene one, take two, the the you know. It's amazing and then it turns red and gives a beep. And it's awesome. And they had airplanes, they had pilots, they have the whole deal we had over there in New Zealand. And Phil Palmer arranged and orchestrated and everything is like a dance. It's like a it it's I don't know how to say that. It's like it's like a thing on stage and Every instrument has to play in the right order in order to make it all work. And he did it. I'm very proud. And when it comes out, I know Betty Dravis is just kicking at the heels waiting for this thing. (laughs) But I'm not sitting on it, I promise. But I'm waiting for the last and final shoot. When we get it, it'll, it'll be in post, and then it goes and gets done. But you have to realize New Zealand has had three deaths through the filming of that, which we never went public on. But there were three deaths during the filming of Saving the GPS Lady, and FTP had to deal with that. And that's FTP U.S. and FTP New Zealand because we all take the brunt. We all take the heat, and we all take the heartache. And And you have to have a grief. You have to have a grieving process, even professionals. We had no time. We had no time. And I told Phil, I said, after you get this done, this last scene, you guys – you take a break, you take a vacation, and you just go and you hide your heads and you just relax for a while because it's been very hard. We had two deaths in, in Phil Palmer's family alone ah. as producer and director. 
And then we had Arno Manima, a great entertainer, who was in the film, and then he passed. And he passed on a cruise ship. Nobody even knows what happened. He's not even back yet. His body is not back yet. Um, really? He was out on a cruise. And that's a, that's a, we're still dealing with that. And so there's been a lot going on with Forbidden Tears Productions. But, you know, in the business, you stay strong, you stay smiling, you never let them see you sweat, you keep going. And then you keep building and you keep making it happen. And that's what we've all had to do. And I, I've been so very proud of the whole FTP team. Well, aren't you going to also be at the Arkansas Film Festival? Um, which, no, um, that didn't, we did not get accepted in that one, which was really strange. <laughs> we, one we, would have thought. Oh, one would have thought, you know, but... You know, that's like Michael Jackson said. He always performed outside of the country because he was more appreciated. Well, I guess we, we, we're we more appreciated in California and Miami than we are in Arkansas. But we we are loved in Waldron, and we are loved with the Arkansas film base, and that is good. Just not the beer keg festival, okay? So And, and the award would have been a beer keg anyway, so who cares, right? Well, that's so, true. They, that's you know, that was to go and, you know, I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> um, they didn't want me. I didn't want to be there, right? That's the way I look at it. <laughs> they didn't well, want me. I didn't want to have, be there. Because you're going to have much more fun in Miami with five of your films being well, introduced. Well, that's true. You know, and then i got to be in Cali in uh, July because I want to see Betty Dravis. I'm going to be kicking it with Jimmy Shondee at the Bat Cave, I guess. And we'll be driving over to see Betty Dravis, meeting up with Cat Pacino and... Uh, I'm saying hello to everybody over there. I guess I got to meet up with some people over there. And then in June, I think we're going to shoot the sizzle reel to the Mansfield killings. So you know, I I'm not sweating anything. You know, I don't I don't worry about a, a beat missed because I got ten more beats to make up for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I can't I can't worry about a beat missed. I have too many responsibilities. You know. That is the <laughs> truth, child. Like, ladies and gentlemen, like I told y'all. I thought I was busy. This woman is working rings around me, and I I run them no sleep, so I'm sure she's running <laughs> on even less sleep than I do. Oh, I mean, it's, we miss. it's amazing. I spent the last two days writing the script for Passageway, and I just finished it today. So, you know, I have I think I've had four hours sleep and a lot of cups, lot of, lot of cups of coffee. Yeah, so. coffee is my best friend. The other morning, oh, I was up, I woke up at th- at at two o'clock. I'd only been asleep an hour and a half. I woke up at 2 o'clock, so I went and got on the couch. I thought, well, if I get on the couch and I get covered back up and I get my back to quit hurting and I can get warm, I go back to sleep. Well, I laid there and I flipped and I flopped. I said, forget this. So I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning and put together this Sunday show. Of course, I'm not sure what it's going to sound like because I was Oh, I love operating. all of your shows. You do so great. Well, I work hard. You work Y'all hard. Ones that well, no, no, y'all are the ones that do it. I'm just a facilitator. I just offer well, you know, that's candy. what I tell all the people in my films. It's not me that does it. I mean, yeah, I, I put it together, I orchestrate it, or I direct it, and I, may, I put everybody in the right place. But without the actors and without everybody that comes in and makes it happen, there wouldn't be a film. And my well, kudos and goes out to everybody who makes it, makes it happen. All of the actors, I love them so much. They're so fun to work with. All of the talent, and that's what you're talking about. It's the mm-hmm. talent, and it's the talent. and I just, you know, I'm so grateful to know each and every one of them. They're so real and down to earth. And kudos to all of you guys out there for everything that you do for FTP. And you know, not a day that they're not appreciated. And and we learn so much from those that that we work with. I know I learn a lot from my guests, and I know you learn from from the people that you work with from the the water boy on up for instance someone who used to work with you young billy billy um yeah billy wade he's a storm chaser ladies and gentlemen and i had him on my show last weekend and we talked about how dangerous storms are and how dangerous flash floods are well lo and behold he had to climb up on his roof because of the flash floods that he was involved in is in his hometown. Wow. Wow. Yeah. 
and we had just wow. talked about it. Not on. I think it was Saturday night. He was on my show. Oh, cool. And he said that he was going. He was leaving. It was either Friday or Saturday. He said he was leaving the next day, and they were going storm chasing because there were storms coming in. Well, two days later, I'm seeing where he's had to be rescued. He and his family had to be rescued because their house got flooded and wiped wow. them out. Wow, that's really sad, you know. And and I hate to see that happen to people, you know, and storm chasers. But, you know, I wouldn't be a storm chaser. No, I mean, I don't know, I might, a whole but lot I doubt it. I mean, I skydive, whole lot more but that's not I chasing a storm. No. <laughs> of course, you know, I mean, but I skydive, maybe I could chase a tornado or two, but then I'd want to go home, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hats off to storm chasers. Do we really need storm chasers? Can't we just see them coming? Well, see, I asked him that question, and this okay. is what he told me. He said, Yvonne, what we do is we send the information back to the meteorologist and the and the and the weather scientist, and they study it in order to figure oh, out. Yeah, they they put that stuff up in the air, you know. I right, in movie. order to yeah. in order to figure out a way to maybe dissipate a tornado or break up a storm, but they study everything that these guys send back to them. So yeah, we need the okay, storm chasers. Okay, I guess we kind of need them for science. All right. It's dangerous, but yeah, we need. Yeah, them. it's dangerous. I don't know. Well, Billy Wade, thank you. Okay. Amen, we'll brother Ben. Yeah. So we'll have let's. To. Let's talk a few, you got started. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I'm always talking about how sometimes our journey will take a, a different path once we start on it. You started out doing photography, right? Which part of my life, actually? You mean with well, a camera? <laughs> with a camera. With, you. My father you, always had a dark room under the stairs. Now, I started out with one of those big old-time dryers that you put. Actually, you had to you had to develop the film in the dark room, and uh-huh. you had to use the chemicals, and then you take the photos and you hang them up on the clips or you put them on the dryer in the big drum, and it goes around. So I've learned photography and film all my life, and then I in college, of course, I did, you know, I covered the sports, and I worked for the torch and the newspaper, and everything else so I've been in photography most of my life and enjoyed it very much so yeah I started out in photography and, and you've won awards you. you've won awards for your photography yes. correct well through nature's blessings because you know you have you know wildlife and national geographic and this and that and they love the nature shots and this and that and I specialized in microscopic photography of nature and that is very hard because most of them were one less than one sixteenth of a centimeter in size and little bugs. And so that's a lot of lenses and a lot of adapters and a lot of manual photography and this and that. And it takes a lot of honing of skills. So I specialized in microscopic photography for nature and for magazines. And, yeah, I won a lot of awards in that. And a lot of colleges and universities liked the bug pictures and this and that, so in magazines. So it was a lot of fun, and I called it Nature's Blessings. See, ladies and gentlemen, and then she just graduated from there to exploding on the film scene, putting out. Well, films. that was more like I, I, I had an epiphany one day, and I said, I want to do a film. <laughs> so there we had it, and so we did a documentary, and um, that that kind of gives you the bug, and then my business just started growing because I actually started out writing you know, for Red Book Magazine and Playboy. <laughs> wow. Nobody knows that part, but... See? Um, and Playboy, you know, pays good money. And so yeah. a very descriptive writer and short stories. And then Red Book Magazine was very fun to write for. And that was in college in, like, in 83. So I started out writing for magazines. So, say, ladies and gentlemen, it, it doesn't matter what your dream is, it's the the journey is half the fun, wouldn't you say, Don, uh, Jennifer? The, the oh, journey yes. to get there is is well, is, writing is for Playboy was amazing, you know, and God Hefner was awesome, you know, and I was just a tiny thing back then, you know, just young, you know, and just 
20, barely 20 years old, and got my first publication, and, you know, met Hugh Hefner and everything, and got to take photos and write my stories and this kind of thing, and it was just an awesome time, and it paid, I paid my college, and, and didn't get, didn't, I didn't have student loans, I didn't, paid cash for everything, which is hurting me now, because now if you don't have debt, you can't get anything almost. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, so you're damned if you do or you're damned if you don't. But <laughs> I've had an amazing life. I, You know, I have, I'm happy, put it that way. And I, I've been able to reach my dreams and pretty much accomplish whatever I've set out to do. And now I'm setting out to accomplish this and to be successful in the business. And Hugh Hefner always told me, he said, Jennifer, and I'll never forget this, he said, whatever you touch seems to turn to gold. He said, you can spin it if you can keep doing it. And he said, and then you're going to win it. And and it was amazing, and I just loved that. And uh, And so I've had a lot of good advice over the years. And and Hugh Hefner's very right. made everybody proud. Well, you've made yourself proud, too, and that's the important thing. I think sometimes we get so wound up in making other people proud of us that we forget to make oh, our God. own selves proud, you, you and there's can't. nothing wrong with that. You can't live your life trying to make somebody else proud. If you can go to bed at the end of the day and you can say, and you see my post a lot, I say, I am well pleased. And if, mm-hmm. if you can exactly. say that and you can say, I am well pleased, and you're pleased with yourself, then that's what matters. Because if you try to live your life according to everyone else, you're going to always fall short because there's too many people that got too many different opinions. And it's not other people's work. and other people's expectations sometimes are so far out there that it doesn't matter what we do, we're not ever going to meet them. The only expectation right. we need to meet is our own. Well, I think that that's what helps me in business too. I'm able to say, nope, can't do it, won't do it. Sorry, have a nice day. And you have to be able to do that. And and yes. I can still sit down and say I did the right thing because it was the right thing. You and know? it was the and, right and thing you for you, know. and that's what's important. Right. And and a lot of times you have to do what's right for the other person because sometimes they don't know. And as a producer, you have other lives. You have other decisions to make. And it's not just, say I'm doing a film, it's not just my film. You have other obligations. And so every decision right. you make, you have to make decisions that are right for everybody in the big picture. And would you believe... Miss Jennifer, as we said at, before the show <laughs> went live, we it are winding time. down. Yeah, it is, and you're coming back, right? I'm going to get you back, right? Anytime you need me, just call me, and we'll hook up our schedules. As, as you know, you, we, we ink, we pencil them, and we till we get an ink spot. So <laughs> there you go. I'm thinking. <laughs> That's I'm what thinking. We do. I'm thinking November I want to bring you back because by then you'll have these other films maybe done and out there and we can talk about how well they're doing and where you're headed besides the Manfield's killing. Oh, thank you, yes. And I should have all of my schedules calm down and be kind of back at home by then and sitting on home base. So okay, that so I'll good. bring you back in November. Now, tell the rest of the world, because unlike me, they don't know where – your beautiful face can be found in all of your <laughs> all of your little tidbits of news and your little trailers and all the information and expectations. So tell these folks where to find you. Well, if you want to find me, there is one way to do it. You Google, just Google. Go up on your address bar and you Google Forbidden Tears Productions. That's it. Just type that in your address bar and look at the search results, and I'm there, everywhere. You don't have to search anymore. <laughs> That's it. And, and, and you follow is, every one of those links, and you'll find me. Forbidden Tears Productions, like no crying. She is everywhere because she is everywhere. an amazing, an amazing woman. When I grow up, I want to be just like her. Oh, my goodness. When I grow up, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> I want to be like so, Mike. <laughs> so, and, and especially you ladies out there, you you women, you young women, look, get out of your own way. Or as a friend of mine used to say, just get out of your own damn way and make your dream real. We are women. We are strong women. We are independent women. 
we know how to get things done, and we're proud of that. Would that be a fair statement, Jennifer? That would be a very fair statement. Always remember to smile, take two minutes, put it on another person's shoulders, and remember, you matter. And you're smart, you're intelligent, and you can do whatever you set your mind to do. And and this is what I also tell folks, and Jennifer, feel free to steal it because somebody sent it to me, and that is, along with what Jennifer said about smiling, is your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, how you leave others feeling after having an experience with you becomes your trademark. Very important, very important. Hold your head high, never let them see you sweat, and be proud of yourself, number one. And you're going to go far in life. And if you don't feel good, get dressed up. That always helps. Exactly. Put on jewelry, put on makeup, put on high heels. The main thing is just believe that you can reach your dreams. You just have to believe in yourself. If you believe in yourself, you can fly, and then you will fly. And she's right, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me, because for too many years, I was that person who said, well, I shoulda, I woulda, I coulda. And then one day I woke up and said, by George, I'm I'm doing this. I don't say I'm, I'm going gonna now. to. No, I'm not. Yep. I'm not going to do anything. I'm doing this right now. And that's how we have to look at our dreams. We can always say, well, I'm going to down the road. Well, going to doesn't mean anything. We all know about the road to hell. It's paved with good intentions. There you go. You have Just to you know, make it. make a list. You know, make a list, and on one side, what's stopping you? On si- on the other side, what are the benefits of just going ahead? And I, I bet you're going to find the benefits are going to far outweigh what's stopping you. And if you look at what's stopping you, go through that brick wall or go over it because there's always a way to get around it or to get above it because the only thing that stops you is your mind. That's it. Exactly. And, and ladies and gentlemen, understand this. Jennifer and I both have... have hoed a lot of hard rows, but we refuse to allow anything to define us. We define <laughs> who we are, where we're going, and how we're going to get there. Would that be fair, Jennifer? That would be fair. And as long as we are kind to animals, kind to humanity, and kind to the world, I think that we're going to be okay. Absolutely. So join me tomorrow night, ladies and gentlemen, when I have a author named Carlene, her name is Carlene, not Charlene, but Carlene Singleton. She has an amazing tale. And then on Friday night, Judy Pins will be here with me. And then on Saturday night, another filmmaker, Dee McCulley out of Canada, will be telling me what he's been up to. And this man, he he's like Jennifer. I don't think he ever sleeps either. <laughs> so... <laughs> Understand, and then on then on Sunday night, on Sunday night at eight o'clock, it will be a pre-recorded show of some wonderful indie musicians, some that are just starting, some that have been out there. But I'm going to tell you what you and and most of them I've already interviewed on the show, so you've heard their music before, which is an even better thing. So. Become a regular listener. You can become a follower of the show and keep up with when the shows are, what time they are, and who's going to be on here. All you have to do is go on off the chain on Blog Talk Radio and click follow the show, and they'll tell you everything you need to know. But as I always say, stop asking permission and achieve your dream. Because there if you, you go. Keep, there if you, you keep go. Asking Yes, if you keep asking permission, it is not going to happen. So stop asking permission. Just do it. Miss Jennifer, as always, my friend, this hour's flown by, and I so appreciate you taking an hour of your busy, busy day and spending it with me. I thank you so much. It's been refreshing, and I think I actually needed this time with you because you actually allowed me to rest. <laughs> I had a great time. I really did. I always do, Yvonne. Your show is amazing. You are wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you, my darling. And ladies and gentlemen, find Forbidden Tears Productions and keep up with this amazing woman because one day, real soon, we're going to see her on the Hollywood 
stage getting an Academy Award because she refuses to ask permission to achieve. So until tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern, when we will interview Carling Singleton, author, brand new author, we say, believe it, dream it, achieve it. Achieve it. There you go. Till then, this is Yvonne Mason with Off the Chain saying good night. Okay, so as, as awesome. we're off the air now, but yes. what I will do is, is when this goes up in dark eyes, I'll tag you in it like I always do. I'll tag Miss Betty and I'll tag Barbara, and then tomorrow when I put yeah, it I up think in the Barbara pod- was listening. She's green, <laughs> sweet. So when um, tomorrow, I'll also put it up on all the podcasts and then put the links up and tag you guys. So y'all just pimp it all over the place. Awesome, I sure will, and I love you very much, Yvonne. And uh, thank you I love so you. much. You're welcome, darling. And, and, and send me the you information. Keep where, you know. And it's and I want to know more about that story of yours because it sounds every time, you know, jet it to me or something because maybe we should film that thing. That sounded kind of funny. That comedy thing. So oh, the pink I want to read that. Yeah, okay. I need to read that. I need to read that. I will. You have Kindle, right? Um. Uh, yeah. All right, I'll send, could, I'll send you a Kindle yeah. copy. If you have Kindle, I would love I'll, that. I'll, and let me take a look at that. And and okay. because every time I hear that thing, and every time I hear that one segment, it grabs me. So I need to know more. Okay. <laughs> I'll I'll do it as soon as we get off. And um, send me the information of of the where the Miami thing is, and let me see if I can find y'all some decent places because Miami is a big area, but it's also a high crime area, and I don't want y'all. Yeah, it's in Aventura, Florida. Okay, well, send me all the information. Aventura, wherever that is. Send me the information. I'll see what I'm finding for you. All right, cool. And I'd just like to get a beach house for everybody so it doesn't have to be a hotel suite or something. Just, you know, maybe something for a week and uh, see if we can't kick something up there because we got everybody coming and then we could cook a big dinner and maybe you could come down for one time and we could see everybody. You can see Kat and everybody. Well, we'll see what we can do. That will be great. All right, girl, and come to the beach then. All right. All right. Love you, baby. Love you honey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're listening to Love Advice with Leanne. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Leanne. Long-time listener, first-time caller. <laughs> Why, in your professional opinion, do you never take my calls off the air? Is this Carl? Yep, it's Carl. I mean, we had a few dates. Everything was great, I thought. Uh... Well, you know, when you switch to GEICO, you could save a lot of money on car insurance. Okay, awesome. You should call them. I will. GEICO, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Only T-Mobile gives you unlimited data with taxes and fees included so you save hundreds a year. And get two lines for just 100 bucks a month all in with AutoPay. And right now, harness the power of unlimited with a Samsung Galaxy S8. It's the fastest Galaxy ever, so it deserves the fastest and most advanced LTE network. Why wait? Switch today. Only at T-Mobile. Top 3% of users greater than 30 gigabytes per month may notice reduced speeds. Price includes sales tax.